That's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what's happening there is <coughs> the cube has been enlarged to the point where um, most of the points are actually outside of the view volume um, which everything's clipped to after you get the normalized device coordinates That's actually really cool, because <laughs> this is this is right at the center because I hadn't translated it at all. Um, we can launch, and it'll all rotate roughly about the center, because we're zoomed right in on that. Now that's really cool. It's difficult, really, to tell what the the whole thing would even look like when it's at this scale. Hmm. Turn the point settings back down. Yeah. It just looks like static. <laughs> well, it does at certain levels. That's kind of cool. It's interesting because they seem to they have little... There's certain uh, points that look like they they stand out to your eye a little bit more, it seems like to me. <coughs> using um, I'm just just kind of looking at them they stand out to me like like you're looking at a, a sky with stars they sort of stand out as looking like three-dimensional points uh, maybe it's just uh, everything around them serves as a suitable frame of reference and uh, just the, the axis that it's turning on because um, the rotation is actually very simple it's just um, let me show you. In the timer function, basically I just have these global variables. Um, the clock's not really used. Um, and this is something I was messing around with to try and like scale it so that um, basically it, it just went from zero to one to um, to well you could pause it. And also it's it's um, in the controls here. Um, I was gonna clamp it between zero and three. Um, yeah, and so basically, um, it just I uh, change it so it's subtracting from y and z. But um, <coughs> these are just uh, uniform variables in my vertex shader, and they come in here. Um, it's really cool that you can have your whole uh, GLSL program like as uh, just a string <laughs> within your program. I think that's really cool, <laughs> keeping everything together like that. But um, it, it's it's used here. Um, um, make rotation matrices using this function I found um, to rotate about an arbitrary axis um, and just give X Y Z kind of things, and then uh, multiply that out to get the new position of the, the vertex and then this is kind of cool everything is a medium gray until the old fragment shader I had right so basically what <coughs> what I changed there um, and I can set it to do it now um, it makes the cube a color space basically um, okay yeah I was messing around with this because I found a new notation um, that I liked a lot um, the idea being that you make your varying variables in GLSL, you make those, um, you, there's a naming convention that you put V underscore, right? 
I, I liked the sound of that because and then attributes are a underscore and uniforms being u underscore but i haven't quite gotten there yet um just i i think it's kind of a cool thing and it it's nice and representative of i mean it would help keep you oriented a little bit i think anyway um this is the color space cube um this is achieved by for every fragment um it has an interpolated position and also a color the color is just 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 um which realistically doesn't even need to happen it could uh it could just be 0 0.5 here um i think actually yeah that, <laughs> that would probably work um but anyway it's it's based upon its position and that position there is coming from the raw um untranslated position um in the the numpy array right <coughs> so that's not going to change when it rotates it's going to be where it is in that color space and so that's <laughs> that's what it does right now um you can the the rotation I actually have set up in a really kind of cool way because um, I was looking at my keyboard and I, I realized that they sort of have a radial pattern to where like all right, I have G as the center key right and then above it is T and Y okay those are um, plus Y and plus Z I think yeah and then below are B and B those are minus Y and Z right <coughs> and then F and H on the two sides, those are plus and minus X. Okay, and then the next, if you if you see that how that forms like a circle, um, the next six keys out, U, H, and N on the on the right, or yeah, on the right, and then um, R, D, and C, or yeah, R, D, and C on the um, on the left, um, those are my rotation keys. And those rotate. Um, well, they'll increase or decrease the um, uh, those uniform variables for the rotation. <coughs> In addition, I have two keys to control point size, which is handy. Slow things down a little bit. Um, ooh, fuck. <laughs> also, don't decrease your point size below zero because G OpenGL yells at you. <laughs> but um, yeah, also, I have these keys set up for scaling, and um, I showed you that earlier, but um, this is, oh, I should relaunch this so it's at the center, and then try that same thing that I was doing before. That's not a bad idea. Um, yeah, just relaunch it. That's kind of cool. <laughs> it gets a little bit too chaotic, I think. Just kind of flickers a lot. I'm not sure. But that's that's what's new, I guess. <laughs>